We're live. Hi, everyone. Um, don't need this anymore. Thanks for joining us. I'm here at the Darwin Martin House's uh, The Gardener's Cottage. And if I can just kind of turn the, my screen around, you can see I've got a couple of teacher friends with me, Mary Howard, Jill Palante, and over this way I've got Sean Viola. So these are all teachers that are part of a grant-funded project through New York State Department of Education. We're here today, and I'm not there with you, because uh, we've been working on this project for three years. And so I'd like to actually have uh, the teachers share with you the project. This is a virtual world project. Uh, my, just to give you some background, I'm from the Winnie Rec. I do technology integration. I'm a former elementary teacher of 15 years, and one of the one of the, my passions as an elementary teacher is social studies, but I always found that my students were always complained about history as boring. And um, so I kind of took that feedback from them at the time and thought maybe there's, there's got to be a better way to, to teach social studies. And so one of the things that I discovered when I started looking at some of the things that were going on in gaming and virtual environments is that here was a place to actually make social studies interactive and make it an active experience for kids to learn about history. So that was the grand design of this project. And again, with the grant money from New York State Department of Ed's Tech and Learning Grant, we kind of put it in place. So I've had some teachers um, that have come on board. We've offered really three projects. The first project was the Anne Frank, or Understanding the Holocaust Project, which was meant to be a companion piece to the Diary of Anne Frank. So because of its serious subject matter, we didn't want this to be uh, too whimsical, so we wanted it to have some, some powerful, serious learning involved in it, but we also wanted to make it a different experience as far as a social studies piece. So uh, with that, we got some help from PBS, um, local affiliates, WND, and also an affiliate in Arizona, PBSA, so they helped us get resources for to embed in the project, so we've had some really great support along those lines. And uh, then we've just had just you know a great group of teachers that have taken um, flight with us. So first year was the Diary of Anne Frank, or the Understanding of the Holocaust Projects, and students do ten Common Core based activities, and then they their last I think their last two projects of it is one to create an exhibit. So they actually are kind of a museum curator of sorts. They get to develop their own exhibit. And then their last one is a reflection candle, which hopefully brings out the powerful learning of uh, Anne's diary as well as that time period. Our year two it was a medieval sim meant to be a kind of role-playing, uh, quest-based, game-based learning environment, which we worked on last year. And it was really designed around sixth grade, middle school. But uh, so that one is is a really kind of dynamic project. There was, the, there was a little more fun. Um, Shall we say the F word in education, but it was it was meant to be role play, but also provide the heavy hitting you know, content that we um, that we want out of uh, learning about medieval ages. And then this last year was really meant to be a little open and kind of providentially, I guess we could say, um, the Darwin Martin House here in Buffalo has been a really great partner in um, with the project. And that's where we are today. We're developing. We're here again. We've got a group of teachers. I'll even show you over there. We've got a group of teachers in the other room, uh, working on content based around building in a virtual environment for design, for history, and for art. So, those are our three kind of tiers. And I'm gonna kind of turn this over to some of my teacher friends through um, the project and their experiences with it. So. Um, I'm going to start. Jill, can you share your screen? Yeah, so I go back to here. Yep. It's over? Yep. Sorry. And share your screen. Let me just make okay. sure. I'm still mute, so we talk. Okay. So go ahead and unmute yourself. Uh, that's I go back to here. So Jill Palante is from St. Peter and Paul Hamburg, and she's been working from day one. <laughs> Uh, here I am in the um, Islands of Enlightenment. Oh, no one else is it? Who's it? 
It says, yeah, it says it's sharing. It's it's a it says I'm sharing. You are right next to me. You are right next to me. I can see you on yours. Yeah, there you are. You're right. So why don't we take my computer? All right. Okay. All right. Now I can't see that. No, I see. Ouch. So I have to mute mine. Hold on. This one is on. <laughs> I have to mute myself. So hold on. Okay. Okay. Is that working? Yeah. You're good. Uh, okay. I have to move around. Right. Do I forget about this one already? There it goes. Okay. All right. So now I'm Professor Illuminati. This is the canal that was built there. I'm standing over there. This is Anne Frank's world built in the island. So when the students are out here, they have the canal. There's the buildings. We're actually going to go into this building right here, though, which is kind of a welcome center for the Anne project. And in here, here's the projects over on the wall straight ahead that Andy mentioned. There's also a lot of other information about Anne Frank's world in here. There's over here historical clothing. The kids that are working on the project need to be in accurate clothing for the time period. So they'll come over here and get their clothes. That's the first thing we do. So they have clothing to work on. And then over here, the projects that they work on. And each project deals with a different aspect of Anne Frank's world. So there's one of the assignments is about stolen art from the Nazis. One of the projects deals with food, what exactly they were eating. Some of the projects deal with other things that have to do. And then, oh, I'm getting a landmark. So I'm not talking about mark. But if I go over here, what also think one of the things the kids enjoy the most is this box by the door. It actually takes you, gives you a note card to go visit the secret annex. So if you go in here, yeah, see it's moving again. Okay. Yeah, I'm moving. <coughs> yeah, I'm not moving on my computer either. Okay. Oh, no, no, okay, maybe it's slow. So you get a note card, and you can actually visit different rooms in the. So, for example, we will go to downstairs kitchen. Teleport there. Hopefully that works. Yeah, the teleport there. We're not teleporting. All right. But you could teleport to the <laughs> annex. But we'll go to the museum because that's right ahead of us. Andy mentioned that the nine and ten pieces are things to curate the museum. So inside the museum are all the children's pieces. You go to the museum, I think. You can close the door. All right, so inside the museum, there are the projects that the kids have created as their project number 10. And so here's a piece of, I believe, this project focuses on stolen artwork. A lot of students do PowerPoint presentations on different aspects related to Anne Frank or the Holocaust. So if you can go through the slides. One of the kids love the most is this cattle car someone built down here at the end. It really gives you the perspective of what uh, Anne and her family had to endure. So that's down here. Um, over here, I know these are some of my students' projects, so I can explain these. To catch up. Yes, this podium is actually some speeches one of my students created. These are all actually Prezi's. They'll take you to a Prezi link outside of the virtual world, and these are their, their projects that they created. One of my students last year created this flag over here. And again, if you click on it, he'll give you the card's information. One of my students made these burning books and explain the book burnings. 
and then bear with me while we walk down this long hallway. The museum is very large. Over on the left, there's Anne Frank's desk, one of my students built last year. And again, all these slide shows on the wall are student presentations. One of my students built a piece of a wall and put her project on that and explained her project on the wall. One of my students built this airplane. I have no idea how she did it. I'm not this good at building. But she, she built this airplane and she lost it once and started over. And it was a replica she has, I believe, in the back wall somewhere is a photo of the one she used here. This is the photo she started with, I believe. And then she built it for New Zealand's photo. That's beyond what I could ever do. So that's amazing. And here's some more PowerPoints. One of my students built this whole display over here. I love this one because it really seems like a museum piece. So it totally catches up. Yes. So here's, she did World War II planes. So she has her PowerPoint presentation up here. Okay, click on them. And then she also has these presentations down here, which I do like. Lots. And there's more PowerPoints. And then Andy also mentioned assignment nine was the reflection room. So if you go around here to the left of our PowerPoints, and some of these are my students, some of these are students from other schools. It's not all my kids. This is our reflection room. And for assignment nine, the kids create a candle. And then if we get closer, just give me a second. Go the candles, and we'll be just randomly clicking the candles. So hopefully there's something nice written on here. <laughs> uh, this is oh, this is one, oh, this is one of my students. So that's a coincidence. She wrote on um, her reflection. They all include a note card about what this project meant to them, what they've learned after studying in Frank, and the candles all would be attached to their their thoughts and reflection. So this is one of my favorite rooms in here, just to read what the students learned. You know, sometimes it's hard for them to, I think, to relate to the Holocaust and Anne Frank. And with the virtual world, I know they're all <clears throat> a lot more engaged. They're all, it, it's more relevant to them. They can actually walk through the house. They can see how small it is. Even with your avatar, it's hard to turn around. And they really enjoy it. All right, so I'm going to pass this over. Are we going on to the... All right, pass over to Mary, and she's going to go to... Let me, let me mute. Somewhere. Okay. Can you see anything? Yes? I think so. Yes, that's the question. Okay. Hopefully you can hear me. Um, I'm Mary Howard. I'm a Grand Island teacher, sixth grade, and I'm showing you the Heir of the King um, quest that we built um, using this open sim. Is it okay? Okay. Um, pretty much the heart of this entire quest comes from the quest board, and as Andy mentioned, we made this more like game-based learning. Um, so the students were asked to um, advance through different levels um, to be a part of the project. And so um, when they arrive and click on the quest board, and they're presented with some sort of a task. Um, and quest number one, they have to meet Lord Dark Raven, uh, which is Andy in disguise. <laughs> and um, They'll um, enter the village and they have to agree to a certain level of um, digital etiquette to participate in the virtual world. And also, like Jill mentioned, that comes with um, dressing in accordance with um, medieval attire. So there's a little bit of, of built-in learning there. Um, Quest 2 continues and they're actually um, taken. I'm just trying to get this note card to pop up. It doesn't want to open. They're taken to an area where they can dress in medieval attire. Um, and I'm going to walk down there because there's a lot of powerful learning and exploring the village and that section of the village. Um, so as you can see as I look around, over here there is a castle. I'm going to zoom out a little bit so you can see the entire castle. Um, there's a number of things built into the castle where the students have an opportunity to explore. Um, down here is one of their first quests, and I'm running into a flagpole. One of their first quests 
um, they explore, you know that note card finally decided to load, they explore this marketplace. Um, and in the marketplace, there's a whole lot of different um, jobs that people would have had during the medieval times. And so in each one of these sections of the marketplace, students can click on the badges in there. There goes that card I'm trying to load again. Um, they can click in there, and this is the section where they would actually get their medieval garments to wear so that they can blend in in this medieval village and, and again, obey the laws of Lord Dark Raven. So they visit a clothe here, and they can continue through the marketplace seeing the other different um, booths that they have. So we have a potter in here. If we continue around the corner, they can see, I think, they've over here. We had a student build this... Um, build this catapult. Um, in a day, all of a sudden, poof, we had a catapult, which is a pretty amazing thing to see these students build. And we have a bakery over here. And then um, further down in this valley over here, there is a mill, because that was an integral part to medieval society. And so one of the quests also is they have to identify these different stations, I guess you could say, um, and what their job and their role was in a medieval society, because that's a very important part. Um, as they continue through the quest, they'll eventually end up in the castle. And in the castle, um, they finally come upon, after a few different levels, they finally come upon their mission. And, and their mission in this entire quest is to determine who the rightful heir to the throne is. Um, they're provided kind of a premise or a story, and they realize that this kingdom of Stormfield at one time had a king, but that king has been lost in battle and left behind are four potential heirs. Um, the students then get an opportunity to interview each of the heirs, and they're all kind of hiding up in this castle over here. Um, I could attempt to teleport, but it might not work, so I'll walk while I'm talking. Um, they have an opportunity to interview each one of the heirs, and then hidden all over the castle and hidden in different teleport locations mm -hmm. are actual clues that the heirs provide to the students. So, you know, referring back to Common Core, there's your evidence-based learning. They're collecting evidence to support their stance in who they believe to be the rightful heir to the throne of Stormfield. And so they continue through their virtual world collecting all of this evidence. And then at the very end, after they've collected a substantial amount of evidence, they're asked to write a, um, an essay which says who they believe to be the rightful heir to the throne. And so here we are in the center of the castle right now. Um, and you can see there's all these different rooms to the side. And over here we have uh, this is Lady Matilda's room, and Lady Matilda actually presents to the students herself. And the way we did that was we um, enlisted the aid of some students at was it was it we or Buff State? I was State. at Buff State. Buff State, State um, drama. The Buff State drama <clears throat> students helped us out, and they. Um, created some videos um, and we animated the avatar with these uh, student voices and so they pretend to be these these different people in this medieval society that are claiming their right to the throne. So the students take notes on the video recordings um, and in the and then they also study these um, coat of arms because that was an integral part of medieval times as well. You know, the names and the meanings behind the names. And in the end they have to determine who it was and they have to write this evidence-based piece of um, piece of writing to, um, to state their belief. Um, and so that's kind of in a nutshell what the Era, King, Era of the King was all about. I'm going to turn it back over to Andy. <clears throat> Thanks, Mary. And I'm actually going to pass it on to Sean Viola. And then he's going he's gonna to talk about it. I think all of the teachers that were part of this found and again, this is why it was such a logical extension for us to come to the Martin House and the Martin Complex. Uh, I think all the teachers found that students had a passion for building. And I think for any of you out there that play Minecraft or see your kids play Minecraft, you'll see this passion maybe play out. So with that, Sean, um, for his students, had created a island as well. And he's logging in here, so I'm going to give him a second. But um, I can just walk around, and, and Mary found with her kids, and I know Jill found with her kids, that all of our kids were starting to um, really dig into building, and it was a wonderful, I think, start to see these kids with such passion. So, um, Sean, just log in and now. He's otherwise known as Mike. <laughs> it's aliens. So, Forgive us for our technical error uh, in this wonderful surrounding. So um, I'm just 
you can see my avatar is kind of walking around here, so I can uh, zoom around a little bit. But these are some of the bills that Sean's students have done. I'll let you actually talk about it once we get officially set in here. Okay, I want to see this. And uh, we started building the sheet for that you use in there. You can yeah, chime in. She talked about um, her kids. She put that using an invention convention. And uh, Jill's Island, actually, we had uh, an amusement park island. Yes. <laughs> Which kids were standing around in the roller <laughs> skates. Uh, so I'm going to try and turn this over to Sean. So she can go to the screen and see that little green button. Mm -hmm. so let share. Click uh, lots of there. And hopefully this is going to work, and I'm going to pull it over to Sean. Oh, I see you. Good. Okay. So, oh, Jim, sure. how are you? All right. Yeah. Welcome, everyone. Um, this is to the HG Lewis Campus School Island. Um, we've been working with Andy for a number of years. I think this is going to be okay. Oh, okay. Um, what we have done over the past... Um, a few years, we have gone through to use this as a giant sandbox to develop things. Um, we use the other elements uh, selectively with our Holocaust selective and our Civil War elective, along with global study review at the end of the year. And what we've done is we have basically allowed students to build in preparation for their training project, which they upload, as you saw earlier at the ECM. Uh, one of the things we did. I can't hear you as well. So oh, are you trying? Yeah. Should I press on Yeah. Will it work? Hold on. Hold on. I don't adjust your audio. Yes. I'll just mute you here. You can use my mic. All right. You can use your screen to continue your tour. Can you hear me? I think we sound okay, all right? We're good to go? All right, so basically, you know, what we've done with our island for the most part, and fortunately, we, we've torn down a lot because, uh, frankly, we're in the next stages. One of the things we're going to be starting to work on in the next couple of weeks is we're going to be de developing our underground railroad. When students are going to be creating specific homes designed to look like the turn of the century, um, mid antebellum uh, antebellum time period, um, houses and uh, with the proper accoutrements that um, certain individuals trying to escape slavery would come across and find. So we've torn down a lot of what already existed. I will show you um, our ziggurat right here um, as I kind of come into frame. One of the things we did for our global studies, zoom in a little bit. Um, preparation for students for their global 10 exam is they actually had to develop um, specific PowerPoint presentations and upload them into the island as kind of like to create a catch-off for review and uh, they decided that we were going to take this ziggurat which we downloaded offline we, we did not like piecemeal that together and um, we were going to add different projects throughout this to create kind of a center where students can come and learn and review um, for the Global 10 Regents exam. And uh, we, we basically had them all over the island, and then we just built us a basically. How do I fly up a little bit higher? Gotcha. There we go. So I guess you look closer to a little bit. So we have Mackey Valley, we have all these PowerPoints, and the students, in preparation for their exams, basically built these and designed this kind of library. And it worked for on a number of levels. Students were becoming more familiar as a review in terms of understanding um, the content. And then other students were able to access their PowerPoint slides um, on anything from Global Nine Ancient Greece to the, the Renaissance to the, the Age of Enlightenment. Um, and it was an interactive way for students to build, research, develop, and learn as a result to help prepare them for their exam. Um, I'm trying to see if we have other houses. We literally started. Students um, at our school, for the most part, had a wonderful time building. They thoroughly enjoyed building their own house. It was virtually theirs, for the most part. And over the span of a class,
this is pretty much one of the things that they were able to build. And I'll take you inside this real quick. Basically, they were able to upload the images, create their own boombox system for the most part with their own wallpaper, their own carpet. They literally were able to build this in one class period. How old are students? Students are in high school, ninth and 10th grade, and building is, is very basic. I mean, they're given these specific tools, and for all intents and purposes, they have to build as, you know, using these, designing these, sizing these, positioning them, rotating them, um, and virtually they have, it's, it's whatever they'd like to create, and uh, we see a great deal of creativity with these students when they're designing whatever they like, and everything sticks with them, so we know who has built what. Um, you know, if we, we build in a spot we shouldn't or if we're building on top of someone else, um, we know whose it is and we can contact them and have them remove them if need be or move them. And uh, the thing I want to uh, point out with Andy is that students thoroughly enjoy um, the, the creative components to it. They like building, they like that it's theirs, they like that it, it's going to be there. Um, you know, for the semester, for the year, they can go back and visit it, and it does a great job of blending what students are familiar with, with interactive online video games, computer games, PlayStation, and it's, we're able to integrate that in the classroom, and um, it exceedingly well. I wish I had more to show you because uh, we're literally in the final stages of having the students develop their storyboarding right now, what the island's going to look like in terms of where. where they're going to, where the road's going to go, where the forest is going to be, um, and literally mapping out where um, this underground railroad is going to take them. And so, unfortunately, there's not a whole lot I can show you that um, the students have created moving preparation for this. But um, the building components are pretty straightforward, as I've kind of already showed you. You're going to get these sort of designs, and you're going to have you know the access to to do what you want. Traditionally speaking, um, I spend the equivalent of 15 hours over the summer with my, my Holocaust elective, and we'll spend about the same amount this year with the Civil War elective, and the students will be able to really design, blueprint, map out, research, and they'll be able to uh, engage interactively with this and communicate with each other as well. And that's one of the things that, that works so well with um, our students is that they can communicate if they're in a different classroom with each other if they're working on a group project in terms of the underground railroad activity. So anything else like Michelle maybe? That's great. Um, okay, we're going to uh, just move on. I'm going to have Mary show you the invention convention because, again, that kind of plays into this idea of building and where we are today. So uh, I'm going to pass it over there, and then I know there's some questions I'm trying to answer. Um, yeah, so I'll mute, and I'm going to turn this over to Mary. Okay, so I am back, and what I'm going to share with you is um, something we call the invention convention. And one of the questions I asked Joe was how old the kids were. And this often is something I find quite remarkable is, you know, I'm working with 10- and 11-year-olds. Um, and, you know, after we finished Share the King project, these kiddos were just clamoring for more. And so um, I took a project that I, an explanatory piece of writing that I traditionally do, and I brought it in the virtual world. And what I asked the students to do is I asked them to create um, an invention. They had to basically bring that invention to market. So they had to start with a patent process. And then um, they had to get their patent filed and approved with me. I was the patent office. And once it had been approved, they had to um, diagram what they were going to build um, and what the purpose of their product was. And once that step was completed, they each were assigned a storefront. And so I'm kind of panning back and forth so you can sort of see this mall that Andy gave us. Um, we didn't build the mall. We populated the mall. So the mall was very empty when we first got it, and then I assigned each student a storefront within this mall. They had to name their store, name their product, uh, put their product in the store, build their product, decorate their stores, and they just exploded with creativity. Um, I'm going to fly over to the corner and show you a couple of these places, um, but you know, our inventions ran the gamut from hot dog makers to you know, basketball return um, structures to you know, cute little teddy bears and, and fluffy things by the girls. You name it. Um, and so you can see this storefront 
here off to the right, um, two girls shared this storefront. And what was kind of I could actually cross mix my students. I had a morning ELA class and an afternoon, and I partnered some of those kids together that weren't even in a class together, which is kind of a neat thing to do. And so this is one. Of, this is a store by some of the girls. And so they had to make a sign advertising their product. They had to build their product and then decorate their store, which they didn't seem to have any trouble doing. So we can look over here. This is the pocket pup that the girls designed. And up on top of their sign are these four little pocket pups that they actually created doing the same thing that Joe showed you, you know, setting down the prims, linking the prims together, texturing the prims. And then they learned how to duplicate what they were making. Um, and then I gave each student a bag to put in their store. Store the gallery walk, and if they get a click on their bag, that constitutes a, a purchase. Um, and so, you know, the students very quickly learned how to texture the walls and, and add decorations and add little cash registers. You can see a little closely here; they've got cash registers on their front counter. Um, and then on this side is a patch of matic. I'm not sure what that one is doing. But so every side there had their invention. And there's another store over here you have to take a look at. I'll do a girl store and a boy store because they're quite different. Um, Nope. See here, we have a store. If I can get in it. Um, these stores were blank. They were gray walls when the students got their stores. And this is what you know another student did. They put the furniture in. They colored everything. They made it a bakery. They made vending machines. This is his. I guess it's a hot dog creator. Here's his sign. His bag with his purchase. And he textured every corner of the store. And then his partner made a burger bun machine. And that's his little contraption over here. So um, what was you know pretty amazing to both Andy and I was not just the fact that they were given an assignment to do and they completed it, but then they just went you know went crazy with innovative buildings. Um, you know back behind the mall in some sections, I've got tree houses and I have gumball machines and I have you know parlors and I have hot tubs, um, you know and balconies and you can see you know this world that they created, you know, this recreation space they made for themselves. They made themselves video game stores. Um, again, 10 and 11 year olds, and they just loved this project. They worked on it day and night. Look over here, we've got a gazebo with chairs and patio furniture back here. And this is all student built, all student created. So um, it's just a marvelous opportunity for these kids to, to show their creative sides. Back to you, Annie. All right. <laughs> Okay. Well, I know our time is coming to a close, but I do want to just uh, thank you know a lot of people. A project like this really was a collaborative effort on a lot of different fronts, from the teachers who were part of it to um, a lot of the behind-the-scenes people. The the Anne Frank build was uh, most of it was built by a teacher from Maine who I've never met before, but just uh, liked the project and wanted to come aboard, and she. Uh, you know, the power of the story brought her there. There was also a gentleman from Australia, again, never met him in person, but he did a lot of the canal boats in uh, Diary of and Frank. Mary O'Brien was the teacher from Maine. Kim Prentice is the guy from Australia who built. Um, so, uh, again, there's uh, the people from the Anne Frank Project at Buff State were a big part of this. Um, and then the Darwin Martin uh, complex here has been uh, really wonderful players and partners. We've had all kinds of people. If you go to our website, it's HTTP, um, just Islands OE, all one word, so Islands of Enlightenment, just islandsoe.weebly.com. That will bring you to our main project site. It will also give you all the teachers that were part of it and all the other people behind the scenes. So I um, definitely like to give them uh, credit. And as far as if you want to get involved in this, uh, on that project website there is a contact area that you could send me a message and uh, we could, uh, as it stands right now, this is a grant funded project so um, you know we're offering it out to schools. Um, anyone that wants to be a part of it, we can try and get you on board and, and talk you through it or if you even want to just see a presentation, um, you know, play out in, in person, we can do that. And we can also, um, you know, connect with you in, in a variety of ways. So I hope that if you're interested in this, I think, I think all of the teachers involved would say that their students enjoyed it. I think their students learned. Uh, there was a learning curve involved oh, with yeah. the technology. <laughs> so well, um, uh, I think that's that's one that we, I think all of the teachers, um, you know, said. So it's it's definitely high tech. Uh, we've learned a lot even from the tech end um, to try and make it a better 
uh, project, and, and we've, every year I think we've made it a little better. And, uh, and again, the curriculum aspects naturally flow from it. I think you can get a lot of powerful curriculum off of this, so it's not fluff, it's not just games, it's not just fun, but um, you know, we're not afraid of the word fun. You know? mm -hmm. So uh, I think with that, we'll, um, we'll wind it up, and I'll check my messaging for any last-minute questions. Any questions from... Uh, Oh, um, Liz had mentioned um, just how how tough it is, and maybe you know the teachers can just kind of chime in here. Is students? This is very natural to them. For us, it's a, a bigger learning curve. Do you want to just throw out some comments? Maybe? I think the more we do it, like the first year, I think we definitely want it. The second year, I can't some of the kids. So it's, you just have to jump into it. I think. Not be afraid to not know what you're doing. Yeah, I mean, I think that's a great way. Do I have to unmute myself? Oh, just, we'll just go from here. No, I just, I think it's a great way um, to, to piggyback off of that. I mean, students, for the most part, if you take them to a different level, um, there is an element that they're familiar with, whether it's they're using iPads at home or computer systems, things of that nature. But um, it, it's unusual in the profession to let students run in and go with it and it can be uncomfortable at times but um, it is great to see how engaging and how engaged they are and how fun uh, just how wonderful it is um, for them to to explore on their own and, and uh, it's a different level of inspiration that you see in students and in general um, to lend the world and what they're familiar with with education it's 21st century learning, and um, it really is. It, if you're willing to, to leap into it, it's worthwhile. I think we do gain a lot from it. Great. All right, well, I'm going to just tilt the cameras here, fellow teachers here. Um, again, if you want to connect with me, connect with any of the teachers, just go to the project site, and we're going to definitely be looking for grant funding in the future. Um, so. My grant writing is a painful process. So. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I have to say about that. <laughs> so with that, again, I want to thank everyone. I want to thank Liz for yes. I want to thank um, Beth Frank Koyak from WND. She's going to be a helper. And Gina Newwriter from uh, the Darwin Martin House. Um, both have been great collaborative partners. So with that, I'm um, going to sign it off unless Liz sends me another question. And thanks, everyone, for coming. Look forward to hearing from you. Oh, really? Yeah. Amazing. Amazing. All right.